Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. Hey. Wow. Fantastic group of films. Thank you very much for sharing those. Um, everybody who contributed to that brilliant film compilation. Just posting the link in the chat there. So that's for anybody who's... Hello, everyone. Hiya. Anyone who was away from their screen during that break time, which is absolutely reasonable. Um, so thanks very much. Check out the film compilation later on. And um, there's a video, a Vimeo link just down there. So um, if anybody would like to share what they got up to during the break as well, please do just pop it in the chat. It'd be great to hear what kind of things you've been inspired to do. Might've been to go to the toilet, might've been to go outside. It might've been to set up your own peer mentoring group it might have been to set up an alternative art school i'm still working on that to-do list you might have been working on your zines as well let us know what you're doing right now while you do that i have a bit of zoom housekeeping to do so and that's because we've reached this fork in the road i'll show you on the schedule we were talking about this earlier so here we go yep yeah, here we are okay it's 3 p.m there are some lucky people who've pre-booked onto the art and or science reading group. And those people are going to be whisked off in the merest of moments in a very smooth action, I'm sure, into your breakout rooms for your discussions on the controversy surrounding learning styles. If you've pre-booked, um, please show us where you're at by renaming yourself with AS at the beginning of your name so that we can easily spot you and then we can pop you into that breakout group. So to re rename yourself, you click on participants, find your name and select rename. So for example, I could rename myself as A.S. Chloe if I was in that reading group. While you do that, a big welcome to everyone else. Welcome to newcomers, especially. This is the Alternative Art Education Slow Marathon, where all day we're celebrating alternative art education. If you're just joining us now, where have you been? I'm so pleased that you're here, but I'm so sorry that you've missed so much already. You've missed out on everything that's in grey here. You've missed out on zine making, oh, hearing from loads and loads of alternative art schools and peer support groups at the Jamboree, discussing online education, labour and cooperation, a fantastic compilation of films and a break where we did various things of which some people might be telling you about in the chat or they might not have taken up my invitation, which is absolutely fair enough as well. Um, just a quick reminder then of our code of conduct for, for today. Please ask questions and post comments in the chat. Um, facilitators might ask you to unmute yourself as well to ask that question in person. Uh, please don't screenshot or record the screen without the permission of the facilitators of that session or the owners of the work that's being shown on the screen that you want to capture. Um, we do have a zero tolerance policy for harassment and bullying. Uh, for more details, check out the code of conduct online. I'll post that link in the chat in a moment. Luckily, we've still got lots and lots coming up for the people who've just joined us because everybody who's not going into the aforementioned art and or science reading group is really lucky because they're going to experience, I'm really excited about this, they're going to, right, okay, the brilliant genetic Moo will guide us through the process of using their purpose-built web-based creature generator to design our own sprites that we can release into a virtual world for everyone to see. That is what we're going to be doing next because it is 3 p.m. After that, at five, when the art and or science reading group people have joined us again, we're going to have another break with a uh, film in it by Darshana Vora, Lost and Found. Then we'll go into our Z Crit with Art Quest. And then the last thing to, for us to do is for our non art school disco to take place via Milky Jeans. Are we ready to break? Are we ready to go down that fork and for the art and or science reading group people to go? It might have already happened. I might have missed it. Ah, oh, the reading room has gone. Thanks very much. So then I'm going to pass over to Nicola and the rest of Genetic Move for our micro home, no, sorry, our micro world at home workshop. So over to you, 
genetic moo. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. I can't see you. Excellent. Can you not? I'm, I should be on the um, hosting, oh. so. Cool, I can see you now, yeah. Hello, hi. Hello. So, welcome to Microworld at Home. I'm Nicola, you'll see, <laughs> I'll try and stand in a space where you can sort of see me. Um, yes, welcome to our Microworld at Home project. Um, Tim, who's standing here, do you want to quickly wave into the camera, Tim? That's Tim. You'll see him throughout the afternoon. Um, so basically, since lockdown, we've been running a micro world at home, which is an immersive digital art space. We're interactive artists and we create um, interactive artworks that need an audience. But because of lockdown, we kind of lost contact with our audience. So we needed to do things virtually. And so we learned how to do some live streaming. We're using Open Broadcaster um, and OBS. yeah, OBS. Some of you will have heard of that. So that we can set up different cameras. Tim, maybe you can put it on camera on number four, so you can see all four cameras together. So we've got lots of cameras um, streaming the space. And behind me, you can see a pixelated wall, which is the environment that you'll be adding your creatures in this afternoon and more about that in a minute. Um, just to say, um, so it's really a pleasure to be part of Slow Marathon today. And um, I'm very, very interested in alternative education. My background is in education. Um, I've done, um, worked in uh, Sixth Form College and in uh, further education and in higher education and have got a lot of things to say about it. Not, not all good. And that's why um, anything alternative sounds good to me. And um, as part of our project, so you saw a film earlier called um, Superorganism by us, and that sort of captures the sort of thing that Tim and I do, which is we create immersive, interactive um, installations, and we invite people into the space <clears throat> to learn creative coding, so that they can add their creatures into the mix. Um, so we've been puzzling over the last few weeks to think about the best way to actually get people um, active in the space and do a bit of learning. And so we're going to introduce you to our bot maker. So um, I think we've got the link online. Tim, can you change the right camera? So we need you to go to interactiveartists.uk and here you will find our bot maker. Can we just figure out if we're flipped or not? Do you want to sit down and see who's in this place and try and, I can't tell if anyone that's watching or what are they watching? Okay, so also Sophia joining us today. Is Sophia there? Hi. Hi, I'm here. Hi Sophia. So Sophia is going to help today um, with managing um, questions and any um, if people want to ask us questions or have comments. Um, so can you just say, is our screen round the right way? Are you seeing interactiveartists.uk? Yeah, in the right way? Good. Okay, so um, basically then when you get to the website, you will see that there is a bot maker version one. And um, so Tim, it's over to you because you're going to actually guide people through getting started. So do you want to tell them a little bit about this artwork and maybe even stand here so people can see you? I don't need to stand there. Um, yeah, let's see who can make a sprite first. You just go to that web page, there's a sprite maker. We won't tell you how to use it, just try and figure it out. Yeah. Press send, see what happens. So do an experiment to begin with and then we will guide you through a more detailed... Um, there's already one bot in the space, which is called Tim, which I've put in earlier. The pink square that's popping around. So, this is the first technology test. Let's see if this program is actually working and you can send stuff. And you'll see that underneath it, there's some text with guidelines and what have you, but come back to that later. First of all, have a go. <laughs> making a creature. Right, so, someone sent one in called A. I'm just going to zoom in on it. So, well done, A. On the right hand, I've got a zooming function in this program, but we can have a look at what A has sent. You mean we could drag that over to and it's got a really complicated load of old letters. I'm not quite sure what it's doing that. 
but they've managed to put a few pixels in there which are dancing left and right automatically. So well done. Hey, I wonder how they did that. You know, that's good. Keep going. Hey, once you send your bot in once, you can just redesign it, resend it, and it'll update on the screen. I'm kind of intrigued as to why the why it's got if I click off it, why has it got three letters on top of each other? Oh, someone's bots are cool. Right, bots are cool. You well done. I, I can see the words, but I can't your bot isn't very impressive, so you need to redesign that one. Um, so yeah, basically what you'll see is maybe Tim, you can cut, get rid of the coloured background so that people can see their artworks more easily. So can you make the background? Yes, I'll, back? Kill, I'll kill the background. So Tim's gonna kill the background and I've got it um, I've got a view on camera one and two, so you can see some creatures coming into the space. And what you'll notice is some people are making really tiny little bots, yeah. and some people are make, using as much of the bot maker screen as they can. Can you see that gray box in the middle of the bot maker? That is a window. You can't actually draw anything in there. And the re reason for that is it means you can see the background color um, that you're sitting on. When, when the screen fills with colour, you'll be able to see the colour of the dot behind you because we'll need that for rules. So... Oh, I know. Is that right? I'm still intrigued as to how AEE has got a kind of like an, an overlapping it's bunch of letters. But we'll see. So it looks like doctors come in the house and KLs in the house. So we'll just leave you this is your first challenge, it's just to create a, design a little bot, it'll dance around, call it that KO or it's sort of flapping back and forth. And Sophia, have you got any questions? We do not know what happens. To ask. Is mine up here? Yes, yes, I can, that's that's good. One, yeah. I'll I'll take that I can see my one now. Thank you. So, yeah, um, well I was wondering for, um, I mean it's really straightforward, but um, for anyone who hasn't figured out how this works. Maybe you can show us um, a screen, like show us the screen and show us how, how it works. One of the things I, I, I kind of intuitively, intuitively worked out is how to animate, but maybe you can explain well, how yeah. that. Okay, so to begin with, um, the Sprite Maker is automatically giving you two frames. And so it's mirroring your animation. So for example, if I, um, I'm going to create. It, it, it animates itself. You don't create the animation. It just takes your drawing and it flips it every half second. It flips it left to right. Now so, I get it. Now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, wow. if you, you can start feel, you can start playing around with that and make little walking I things. I mean, one of the things that was interesting in the discussions Laura, I heard... Laura, that's a nice one. If you look at Laura, she's done a little funny face. One of the things that I heard in the discussions this morning was, you know, obviously the challenge of uh, teaching online. And as you see, we've got lots of camera setups, um, but what we haven't done is given you a screen What's grab. What's bots? Because you know? that's, we, we're using so many... Um, we're linked in so much, but I'm sending Nicola into the house. Well, and this is loads. Oh, I did. Can you see Nicola anywhere? No, disappeared. Yeah, so uh, mine's. If you're not happy with your design, redesign it, resend it. It'll keep this, if it's got the same name, it'll just update the your, your particular sprite. So I can see that Anbot has gone through a series of different designs and there's Conway. Yeah, so this is an important point. When you make your creature, you don't need to send it multiple times. You've given your creature a name and if you change it, maybe you've seen someone's put some eyes on their creature, just go to your drawing, add some eyes on it and click send again and it will overwrite the creature that is in the space. So you can tweak it, but perhaps you're not happy with your creature. So just clear it and start over again. So I've zoomed in on what, uh, one of the robots called Botty McBot. <laughs> if you look on the left hand screen, oh, Botty McBot's stopped. It's stopped, but it was going up and up and up and up. 
That's because it has some rules, movement rules, and we'll tell you about how to do those later. But some of them are actually animating across the screen. Others are just staying still on the spot. Again, we're quite interested, the natural worms appeared. <laughs> we're quite interested in seeing if you can work out from what little information there is on that page, how to start animating, i.e. making them move across the screen, the creatures, <coughs> your bots. <coughs> so we're going to, how many people are in the house, Nicole? We're going to have everybody for the whole time. We've got 40 people in the house. Yeah. I accidentally did an actual worm, someone is saying. Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we're going to do is um, Tim is going to explain, while you're creating these beautiful creatures, Tim's going to explain a little bit about this program. Um, so just some insight for any of you who've done any coding. Um, this is written in the processing language. And processing is open source. It's free. Um, which means that you can download it and start working on it immediately. And we use um, processing because it's free, so that whenever we do creative coding workshops with our visitors to exhibitions or art groups that we um, join, um, that we, um, it, every, anyone can access it. Um, it's a very powerful coding language, wouldn't you say, Tim? What have you got to say about processing? Processing. So I was just looking at Conway, which was popping up the screen, but then it stopped again. Um, processing. Yeah, part of our end, the big, the whole screen you're looking at, which is where all these um, bots are arriving, that's in processing, and that runs locally on our my laptop. But the the designer that they're using is written in P5JS, which is kind of the online version of processing. So it's a JavaScript uh, JavaScript language which can sit on a web page and then send information to somewhere else. Right, so I can see a creature that is leaving a trail. So to oh my Lord. Zoom, so we've okay. got Arena. Well done for Arena. Arena is actually drawing. Can you right, see the red that, trail? Let's get on Arena. Tim's gonna try and zoom into Arena and find out why is it that oh, sorry, Arena, I just I didn't, I didn't want to press that menu. I, I managed to um Block Arena. I'll unlock it again. What am I drawing? I'm drawing black dots. The reason that I, it's a bit, yeah, you can just ask Arena. Let's put it on screen too. So the reason Arena is moving, was moving until I stopped it, is because Arena has a rule. So in, in the bottom maker that you've got, there's the sprite side on the left where you draw the image, and then on the right there are rules. And Arena has added a rule. Here, which um, says any black input turn into a red output and then goes south and east. So that's why Arena has gone across the screen. I'll clear, if I clear the screen, Arena might start moving again. Yep. So Arena is finding lots of black dots on the screen. The screen is default black and it's converting those into a red dot and then going southeast. So what that means is, if the background is black at the moment, you could leave the input as black and choose a colour for your output. And the colour palette is at the bottom of the bot maker. But you can see there is an add rule as well, which means that you can add more than one rule. In fact, you can add six rules. So why don't you now try and get your creatures to leave a trail? So there are three parts to the rule. There is an in part, an out part, and a go part. The in part is the colour. So if I, if I look on this wall of Conway, Conway has a red dot in the middle of it. So Conway can have a rule to convert that red dot into something else and then move. Conway will start moving around the screen. So the in, the in colour is what the colour of the dot that's inside your, in the middle of your nose. In your so it's your window, the window yeah. in your body. So use the colour palette to click the colour and then click on the in button and then click a different colour on the out button and then pick a direction, north, east, south, west. If you want to go in a random direction, you can use R star. R star. Yeah, so have a go with that. Input and an output. 
And while you're doing that, and send I'm going to clear the screen again to give you a better chance of moving. Yeah, remember. So the have got a green dot now. It's going south with a green line. It's right on the edge of the screen, but I can see it here, Nicola, but I can't see it on, on two very well. If I put it well, on two. Well, I can just. What about if I use Tubby? Oh, no, it's even worse. Oh, try Tubby. Yeah. No, it's oh, no, pointing it's in the wrong direction, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got some green dots being produced. There's also some white dots, which we'll tell you about dots. in a minute. Yeah. Right, while you're doing that then, perhaps Tim, you can say why the programme and our micro world at home is called Conway Hall. So this, this particular programme is called Conway Hall, obviously named after the, where this festival was supposed to be. But there's a very famous mathematician who died, who actually died this month of COVID, he's very old, called John Horton Conway. And he was a, a, a a mathematical genius and he came up with in the 1960s or 70s a, a thing he called the game of life and there are some notes about this below the way you're designing your box um, so this is he didn't do this with computers he did it with a load of little um uh, colored dots on a grid on a chessboard or checkers a checkers board i suppose it was but he made up um some rules for how these dots survive or die based on how many neighbors they have. So in his particular rules for the game of life or if something, if some, if one of these dots on the grid has less than three neighbors, I think it was, it dies, sort of out of loneliness. If something on the grid has, <laughs> Laura has created a bunch of wor uh, worms, we'll talk about those later. If something has too many neighbors on the grid, it dies because of overcrowding. I mean, he's a mathematician. These words have just been added to it to kind of add, add metaphors. If something has exactly the right number of neighbors, two or three, it stays alive to the next click of the clock. And then the other rule, the last rule was if there's a blank space and this blank space has three neighbors, exactly three neighbors, then a new dot appears. And using this very simple four rules effectively, and just a grid of dots on or off. You start off with a few little patterns and it's, you get these incredible kind of um, emerging, wriggling kind of life forms. So that's one of the kind of really early programs I looked at when I was a kid back in the eighties. But wow, this is amazing. We just tiny little simple rules. You can create all this kind of lifelike stuff. You can bring all this stuff alive. Right, so what you can see now on the wall is we've got quite a bit of green, we've got some red and we've got some pink. So if you've got one rule, you might think about adding another rule because perhaps your creature has stopped on one of the colours. And if you look into the centre, you can see your creature. So Conway Hall, for example, or Conway is now stuck on green, then that needs a green rule. So if on green, go maybe to black. We have kind of, um, we have lots of ideas of what we'd like you to do in this session, but I've, I've kind of more interested in just following what you do and then responding to that. So how are we going to hear them, Nicola? So, Sophie, are you still there? I'm here. Yeah. So, Sophie, what I would like is that if people have yeah. any questions, they can perhaps signal in the chat or wave at you if you can see them all. And then either you can field their question or you can unmute them and they can actually talk to us so that we can hear them in the space. And as you know, this session is um, running till five o'clock. As you will notice, it's very informal. Not only are you learning, we are learning too, um, because actually it's really important for us to think about different ways to reach audiences and how we could continue delivering support in concepts in coding as well as coding itself. So really one of the things that I will things. do is um, every um, 20 minutes or so, um, I will just show you a little video, 40 second video of Microworld at Home to give you a little idea of, of what we do, what we have been doing since the beginning of May. Um, and then we will actually, Tim can add backgrounds in that you need to respond to. And, and if any of you have got a creature in the space and you're not, you really don't actually want to see it anymore, then Tim can kill it. 
or I so could kill all of them if Sophia, I was sick of them. Let Sophia know that you want yours wiped out and, and we'll do it. Okay? Can I just oh, say, yeah. if you want to ask a question. I'm just kind of trying to get a measure of what we've got in it. So we've got to let, we've got Sim, to hold up. Sophia? Yep. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. If anyone wants to ask a question, it would be really um, great if you can put it in the, the chat because um, the system really overloads if I use gallery view. Oh, it, okay, yeah. It slows Fine. down the, 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 the feed. So if you can write it in the chat, that would be great. Anything you want, if you can write it in the chat um, and I'll pick up on it. And um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Super. Okay, so you'll notice that, as mentioned before, you can actually change the colour of your creature by just choosing a colour and drawing over the top of it. And you can change the rules. You can delete your rule if you're not happy with your set of rules. And in the most radical uh, um, response to it, you can clear the screen so that you can start all over again. So as said, if there's any critters or bots you've got in the space that you want us to remove, we can. Oh, someone says they have lost their Imi. 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 Imi is on the screen. It's just right on the edge of our, of our screen. So I'm not, I thought we had full screen on both. It's that camera there, isn't it? If you push, is that one, is it? No, it's, is it this one, it's the webcam. We've got so many different webcams in the screen. It's We're confusing as which is which. Imi is stuck on the right hand side of the screen. I'll drag Imi across into the middle of the screen. Hold on. I was just going to look at ping pong because ping pong was doing quite an interesting thing. I'll just drag Imi across. So Imi now is in the middle of the okay. screen. Imi and I'm going to clear everything been... away. Imi is drawing a pink line going downwards and on the right hand so screen. So you'll see that Imi actually comes back on the space as well. If I go on to camera two, you'll see that. Now, Imi has stopped, and the reason Imi has stopped is because there is a yellow dot in the middle of Imi. So Imi now needs to have a rule to actually respond to yellow. Now, you There's may have noticed, for those of you who work with um, any sort of photographic software or in video, you will be familiar, or print, will be familiar with RGB and CMYK, and okay. you'll notice that these colours uh, I'm going to talk about ping pong because ping pong's got six rooms, quite an advanced one. Okay, well done. Who's ping pong, by the way? It's, it's playing a game of it's playing a sort of a game of pong, which I've been just going back and forth. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Ping pong has six rules, and you can see them here. Basically, they're returning ping pong is turning a load of different colours into white, and then moving somewhere. Um, white is a special has a special effect in this program. You can see various white dots on the screen, just flipping around on their own. <laughs> I've illuminated him. So, and ping pong, yeah, so the ping pong is creating a load of white ones. The white ones are called, got a D on it, if you look in the menu, you can't see it, I can see it. They are density regulators. I'm gonna try and explain density regulators. So another program that this, um, this program Conway Hall was inspired by it was called the Movable Feast Machine by a computer scientist called David Ackley. Again, there are some notes down below the box, the box maker, um, and a picture of it as well. He was a kind of a cool researcher in a field which is called artificial life, which is using computers to simulate natural processes, um, which is something that really inspires us in our project, the genetic move projects, all the time. So in the movable piece machine by David Ackley, um, he, he had a whole load of pixels on the grid just like this and changing bit by bit. What he added into the grid, and I'm going to clear the grid away, was something called density regulators. So if I just drop one in, or someone, yeah, because ping pong is actually creating a load. So wherever ping pong is, it leaves, it's sending off these white trails. If I increase the speed in this program, these white dots are bobbing around all over the place, and every now and then, a white dot can create a green dot, which is a resource like a tree or a lump of food. And the trees never move, they just sit on the screen the whole time. Yeah, another thing that white deregulators are doing, density regulators are doing, is they wipe away anything they come across, they wipe it away. And 
given those two rules that the density regulators have, effectively it builds up a load of green across the screen, but only, only a certain density of greenness. So whatever else it is that these bots are creating, like Imi, where's Imi gone? Imi was creating a pink line, the white density regulators will come across and destroy it, get rid of that pink line and return it back to a green dot, which is what it likes. And because they're going so fast, hundreds of thousands of frames a second, it's an overall kind of effect. So rather than something um, that you can see, it's just happening all the time, all over the whole of the whole of the space. I've got a speed button which I can slow down. So now I've stopped everything. Your characters will still animate. They'll still move around, but the density regulators aren't moving around anymore. David Ackley in this program called Movable Peace Machine was really interested in how to create a, a robust calculating system, i.e. something that you could bomb out a large area, a bit like the internet, the idea being that you could kind of um, drop a nuclear bomb on half of um, the UK and then you'd still be able to get messages from France to Scotland or whatever because it would find some other route to go around and get get through that damaged system and the damaged system would be rebuilt. So if I demonstrate that, I'm going to put the speed up again and then I'm going to knock out a large area around Botty McBot, which is on the right hand screen, if I just wipe this all away. So I've created a big hole. But bit by bit the density regulators will come back in, they will rebuild what they had before, which is what they like is a load of green all over the screen. So he was interested in computing um, systems which are robust rather than being super accurate they Keep and, going. and if I may, because Chloe mentioned earlier, wouldn't it be nice to have some reference to nature? So you might think about bacteria growing on a petri dish. I mean, you've got this sort of, um, I guess, a fighting for an equilibrium or a, a for resources, as Tim said as well. So in the speeded up version, you could imagine this as a speeded up petri dish. Um, with all the bacteria and food and maybe some viruses in there as well. And I've been reading a wonderful book, The Amoeba in the Room, um, by Nick Money, and he's talking about, you know, the balance in your gut. Uh, for example, you take some antibiotics, it kills a load of bacteria. That does actually have a long-term impact for a few weeks on your gut bacteria. So then other things flourish, or what happens to your sense of well-being. So things to think about. Game of Life was inspired by the attempt to capture an, un well, I suppose an understanding of nature, wasn't it, Tim? Yes, to simulate simple processes like a bacteria spreading or an amoeba. So, so some, I can see someone on this wall has created a load of maze, which are these purple lines, which kind of look like a sort of circuit or um, to right-angled things. The maze also has the ability to rebuild itself, so I knock out a whole load here and make a hole in the middle. The maze will slowly kind of join back into spot. I don't know who's responsible for it, but you're starting to find out that by creating different colours, getting your bot to turn the screen from one colour to another colour, you can really dramatically change the nature of the space. Right, so David VA sent a message saying, is my bot there? David, David, what is it called? Something Tell me French what it's called. It. Did you give it a French name? Um, so, it's called David. Hello, it's called David. Okay, we'll have a look for it, okay? And um, Tim, you've got a roving camera behind you, by the way. So David, you is, get it, stuck on is it in the room. space? I can't, you can try and send it again. Um, I don't think it's got very done this, this program we've been, um, is an extension of something we've been doing for weeks now in our micro at home weekly um, um. YouTube streams. We've been developing this uh, program with some, an artist called Sean Clark and David's been coming in each week and creating pixels, uh, pixel sprites for us to test with. So I can't say it yet David, but maybe it's your, Maybe just keep sending it. Eventually there's get not through. a limit to how many people can send them. Uh, I have no idea what happens when a lot, like hundreds, appear. We've never had that many in the, in the space at one time. 
and I might start killing off a few that well, I'm doing well, I'm just yes, wondering because everyone who is still with us we've got 40 people in the house Tim is going to do a temporary antibiotic effect and hopefully your creatures are still on your computer so he's going to clear everything away and then you can send everything. them again or just yes. some of them I don't know I just think kill, kill everything and then people can send in their creature again if I kill the grid so that's easy start just let them move around a bit more because then David might appear. It might be stuck in a corner or something. Mm, I can't see. Ben, can you kill one of the bots? Bots, yes. bot screw? Bot screw? Bot, bot screw. It's bot uh, so pink. Yeah, this one. Tim, can you kill that one? Bot bots screw. Cool. Bot screw. Why that one in particular? Sophia's just requested it. Oh, yeah, someone's on. Oh, it's about 20 on top of each other. It's yeah, really quite so hard to pick it out. Well, just kill them. Kill them? Yeah. Oh, if you lose yours, then you can send them in again. Okay, this is life. It's it's cr a cruel world. Well, we, we, yeah, we are behaving a bit like gods here, but it is, if you keep playing with the system, you'll find some even more powerful um, colours that will do even more dramatic things on the screen. I mean, I can see that some of them, I don't know who it is, has been sending a load of pink in. Pink are worms in this program. Um, they, they will wriggle around and spread as fast as they can. If I just create some over here on the right, they kind of wriggle and then they stop moving. I wonder why they stop moving. It's because they need, they're getting blocked by the trees, aren't they? Mm. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Can I ask about yes. um, updating your bot? Uh, did you say that you don't need to send it in again? Yes, no, you do. Just don't rename it. If you rename it, then it becomes a different creature. If you keep the same name or if you can remember the name of your creature, type that into the uh, name and send it and it will update your creature. In fact, you can actually be quite sneaky. You could see some, a name on the screen and you could, you could rename your creature discover. and then Let you could just um, sabotage someone else's thing. So yeah, the, I know that I remember that the worms like being on the maze. So if I create a bunch of maze, you can see the worms are wriggling around now. The pinks like being with the purple. They kind of act, act as if they're moving through the purple. So what, what you're learning from what Tim's saying about colours is that some of the colours on your palette are active. They actually have their own life or the bottom, behaviour. The bottom row, maybe. Yeah, and these are the bottom ones. So also, you've learned that, uh, is it white can actually affect or change the colour? So if you use white in your rule, you can impact on the whole of the background. Well, you create two regulators, so they so, have an effect, but other things have more of an effect. So, right, I still can't see David's... Well, don't worry about that, he'll figure it out. Create, no, but I, I'm just wondering if it's because there's a limit. Just tell him to reload his... Um, <coughs> yeah. Reload, it's not a limit on the number Hello, of the screen, just reload the pages. Go live. Unless it's that... Go live, so it's go live. If you can see, go live. Yeah, no, grob. Okay. Keep trying, David. Reload your pet. Reload the reload the app and um, send yes. it again. Right. So, um, for those of you who've been with us for a little while, I would ask you maybe if you got if you're interested, have a look down, scroll down under the bot maker, and it will give you some more information about the thing itself, about how it works, and also make connections with. Um, the inspirations behind this particular uh, project. Shall I set everyone a challenge? Let them get to grips with it first. Okay. And I think before you set a challenge, I'm going to play our little silent video yeah, of, minutes, yeah. uh, of Micro World at Home. So just to remind you, we are interactive artists, but one of the reasons that we are part of this event is because as part of our practice, we provide free workshops for visitors to our exhibitions and we teach them mm -hmm. they can be complete beginners or they can we've worked with the university of the third age and taught 70 year olds how to do basic creative programming and of course we've also had visitors come to our shows that may have some experience of doing programming and we can support them doing more sophisticated things 
the idea is to create a shared creative space. We're really excited about sharing the, our excitement with digital technology and processing is perfect for visual artists because it's so quick to create something amazing. And as mentioned, this, so this program specifically is P5JS, um, which is an online version of processing. That's what your bot maker is and it's running in a processing environment. And being part of this event is really important to us because we, like so many of you, are getting to grips with being online and being virtual. And if this all feels a little chaotic, it yes, is. it is. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, that's kind of the nature of it. You know, it, it could be for all sorts of reasons. Some of you are getting quite expert with Zoom, but you'll know in the early days of Zoom, you forgot to do your microphone or maybe your webcam didn't work, et cetera, et cetera. So we are, we've been doing this properly since the beginning of May. And this is the first time we've properly opened it up to uh, a large group of people to have a go. Now, what I want to do before Tim sets the challenge is I just want to explain video, okay. our it's video. Okay. Yeah, Tim's complaining because I'm talking too much, but I like talking. So this is a video of Micro World at Home. And this just shows you a little bit about what we've been doing over the last few weeks. So the, the program you're running, Conway Hall, and it was previously named Pixel Things, is just one tiny element of my cloud at home. It looks like it's back to front. Is it back to front? No. We are starting again. No. Good. Uh, um, I think we're off mic now, but I don't know. Tell me when you want to go back on mic. And that's us. Not on mic. No, it's on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good. Okay, brilliant. So that is our Micro World at Home project. And you saw that at the end of it, it says, you know, you're welcome to join in. Um, on our website, uh, geneticmoo.com, there's some information about how you can get involved because as Tim mentioned, over the last few weeks, um, we've had um, invited people to, to participate with us. So if any of you are interested in somehow um, getting involved with this Micro World at Home, email us directly to info at geneticmoo.com. Um, perhaps Sophia can type that into the chat. Um, and uh, we can have a chat with you because maybe some of the all our ed uh, groups might like to do something together and share it with us or live stream. We're interested in all sorts of um, possibilities. Okay, so back to Tim. Do you want to set a challenge? Yes, Where, where's David? That's one challenge. Where's David gone? Right, uh, doesn't matter. Yours in the house. Right, I'm I don't think <laughs> anyone yet has found one of the, um, the key colours, which is a fireball, which is the, mar uh, the maroon, would you call it? Yeah. So Tim is going to run what he calls a firebomb. Well, it was called a fork bomb, but I mean, okay. in, the, in the David Atkins program, he was interested in how, how computers can repair themselves once they've, I think I repair, once they've um, been attacked by something. In this case, it's being attacked by a fork bomb. I think I might just, what I was going to try and do is create, fill the entire screen with a fork bomb and then see if they can figure out so how to clear, clear it away. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to clear the background away. So there's nothing on the background, or nothing much. There's a fork bomb. It just fell. Oh, oh wow, water's gone right. in there. Someone's Did already, you need to have water? No, no, someone's already doing a bunch of water. Okay. Well, that was how, that was one way to get rid of the fire bomb. Really, what I was thinking was you'd actually work together to clear collaboratively to clear away this. Draw, this draw a line, to keep some stuff below. So we, it's really hard for me to figure out who is creating that water. How do you do that, Nicola? You just need to keep your eye open. Is, is anyone creating any blue dots? And then I can kill that one off, maybe, or whatever. I can't, I, I can't change the, your rules from here. I can yeah, kill, kill, kill your thing off, but I can't change the rules of its rules. So yeah, we're going to press the firewall now. Okay. So, okay, so pretty much the whole screen has gone red. So the aim is, 
actually, I don't like these deregulators. I'm going to clear it. Someone keeps creating all the deregulators, but fireball. So ping pong is still bopping away, I can see, creating deregulators. But it's your job now is to clear all these red dots away from the screen. So you need to change your rules. Think about how you're going to do that. You might want to work in the little patch of the screen, or you might want to just randomly wander around. It's up to you. See if you can figure out how to get rid of all this. And if anyone's got any questions, Red don't dots. get to type something to Sophia and she can field it to me. I have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, have a, I, I might, I'm going to start. Yes, Sophia? I missed the bit about the rules. So I tried some rules and then it wouldn't upload. So I didn't, I didn't get to see what they were doing. Could, could you go over okay. the rules for anyone? Yeah, like up try uploading it again now. Okay. Yeah, if, first of all, so the rules on the right. So in this situation, you've got this brownie red uh, on your creature, the bot maker. Um, yes. The lower, the lower button, the third one along from the left, is the colour of the firebomb. So because there's so much firebomb red on the uh, screen, it makes sense that your in rule uses that colour, and then the That's out rule is a different one. But what would be good is you, if you're not you 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 stuck, so you'll want to put a second rule in, which can be the complete opposite, or it can be different. Yes, I will. I will demonstrate an idea of how you might do this, but I'll let, leave people having a go. Trying yeah, to yeah, have a go first. Me out, excuse me. And then Tim will actually program one. So we, if any of them go off the screen, Tim, just drag them back in again. So quite a few of you are stuck together, but that's probably it's because you've got you're stuck with red. So you need to have an in rule that chooses that color and changes it to something else. Let's zoom in on someone who's maybe doing a rule. Let's look, let's look at Conway. So Conway's rules, you can see on the right hand screen, it just turns black to black and then goes in a random direction. Conway's got stuck because in the middle of Conway, so there's a fireball and red dot, so it hasn't got anything to deal with that. So let's try and look at another one. Someone that's actually doing something. I can't see anyone that's actually doing anything at the minute in the club, apart from ping pong, which is just hit, hidden away in the corner. So I might just create one that does this, okay? Okay. <coughs> and if, if it takes a little time to get used to it, well, that's the way it is. It's about experimenting and trying it out. The first time I had a go with it, I just could not make sense of it. It is about fiddling, changing rules, maybe deleting some of your rules, or updating your creature. So Tim's just creating a creature at the minute, and then he'll zoom on it, in on it so that you can see the rules. Okay, well, I'm just going to give it a nothing rule for now and send it. Is it okay? And I'll go on to wall two. Okay, so if you can make sure that it's in the middle one, okay? Right. What is it called? Not 100 seconds, it's sending at the moment. So yeah, we're going to just need to reload the app. Well, the underlying um, technology to send the, uh, the information from the app to the program is using something um, called MQTT, which is a a kind of messaging protocol on the internet and it's going through a website owned by Sean Clark who set up this kind of um, What's he set up? He set up a little system which uh, yeah that one's sent through there so it's in so I can, I can he sent through a system where you can um, okay, so move it gathers all the information right. and then tidies it up and then sends it on somewhere else sort of thing. He's so wrapped MQTT up basically. So Tim's got a screen block in the middle, which I'm going to get him to drag over to wall two and okay. then zoom on it. Okay, so I'm going to go to wall two. Okay, so that's Tim. Bit, um, okay, it's now yellow. And let's have a look at the rules that Tim's put in it. Okay, so to do that, I need to press zoom. I'm obliterating it. So let's move it over there. 
It's not too far over, Tim. That's it. Okay, so currently Tim has one rule, which is turn dark green into black. If I make that black to black and resend it. So now it's looking for any black space, converts that to black, and then goes in a random direction. It's sitting on a dark red dot. So I need to change my in color to the dark red, that crimson. Just point there, I Okay, so now I'm going to send the rule again. You can see now- It up, wiggled. Up on the wall, there's one rule sending, you can see in top left just about send a dark crimson square to, to turn that into black and then go in a random direction. It did that, but then it landed on a black space. So I needed to add a rule. So I'm going to add a rule. If I'm on a black space, leave it black and then go in a random direction. So if I add that rule in, you can see now that Tim is randomly moving around and it's, lead, it's getting rid of the red dots bit by bit behind it. Oh, <laughs> someone's put blue right. in. Ah, well done. So water, blue is water, so someone has, worked, someone has created a better system, a quicker system to get rid of the fire bomb, which was to create water, and water just spreads away, washing away all the fire bombs. So if we put another fire bomb back in by pressing, put it there, say. So whoever it was that created that blue dot, if they can figure out how to do that again, it'll wipe away the, and you will have succeeded in that challenge. So um, I just seen that someone's just joined us. So if that's anyone who hasn't, um, oh, thank you very much. Who's that? I haven't got my glasses on. Someone's apologising. That Brie O'Brien's apologising for water. No need to apologise. It was dramatic. That was the solution to the challenge. Well, it was. Was yeah. it bright? So it's uh, it's red yeah, again. It's <laughs> yeah, it's red again. Well done. Um, it's red again, so Tim artificially okay, firebombed it again. So let's let's do something different with this, Tim, because I can see there's a big cluster there that everyone's got stuck on top of each other. Maybe that they've left and just left their bot um, doing nothing on the screen, which is fine. But maybe it's that they can't work out how to move. So if you look at the Tim character on the screen, I'll zoom in on it again. Um, you see every now and then it gets stuck when it hits a green dot and there are loads of green dots on the screen. So I need to add another rule, which would do something like turn a green dot into a black dot and then go randomly again. So now it's moving freely again. So if you, the more rules you add, you can unfree yourself from various little blockages, but you only get six rules. So you might, sometimes you have to kind of work together. And so at this point, it may be that when I say to you, well, you know water, blue, is active. So if I remind you that white is a regulator, that white could be quite powerful. And what other colours quite good? Do you, have you got the brown one? Well, in there? what I'm going to do, Nicola, is I'm going to, I'm going to build a wall around these ones that aren't moving, because I've had enough of them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's pretty sudden lots of them. So I'm build, blue, is, blue can't be moved by anything, or can it? Blue can't be moved by anything of ours, but you can, so I've trapped all those spots in the middle there in that blue donut that I've drawn. So the next aim is to try and someone else who knows what they're doing or someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Just experiment. Try and see if you can free all these Can spots someone rescue all of these this trapped? Blue zone. They're all in lockdown. I'm not telling you how to do By it. By the way, we are in Margate. We're coming from sunny Margate. Um, <laughs> that is one of the beautiful things about this online community is that we can link with all of you in different places and share a space. And you are learning about the game of life, but you're also learning basic concepts in programming, creating simple rules or algorithms. That's true. Yeah. What's this got to do with that education as well? <laughs> Off well, go. it's, uh, yeah, off we go. We are artists. <laughs> no, and it is the 21st century, and we believe that artists should be using technology to make art, i.e. computers. To use computers, you need to learn how to code, usually. Right, someone, A, has create, used a white uh, regulator, has still stuck. So that's, a good, that's, a good, that's a good first actually, step. Actually, A is stuck on white. I should point out A is stuck on white, so A, you need to actually have a rule to respond to that white. Well, they've created that white, I think. The point well, is it, white- Even if they have, they can't do anything with it. No, so the white go. can't do anything because the white can't get rid of the blue walls. That's right, okay, so they've created it, but now they need to respond to it. Amy's come back in a I'm just formation. gonna try a different webcam view. 
And Tim, maybe you should have your hand. We're going to talk about art education a bit. Yeah, in a minute. Okay, I've just changed. So this is our fisheye camera. So it gives you an idea of our space. It's four meters across. It's a living room. It's tiny. This is our TARDIS, sort of. And I've got another camera view to excite you with. Let's get Tubby up. This is our little Buddha camera. So Tubby is movable. So Tim, can you just move Tubby? To what? Your head? Do you just rotate it? Oh, I'll, I'll wear it. There I am. In the space, okay? Yeah, and right. even if it's sunny outside, Tim and I sit in our space. Oh, look, someone, someone is creating a whole a gap here. Someone managed to escape. Oh, well done. So who was that? No idea. Right, tell it, let us know who it was. I can see there's some chat. So whoever it was that ate through that, can you let us know? Unfortunately, it hasn't released anyone else, so, but there is a whole... Shotani, Irini, Yogurt, go and rescue all these other bots if you can. I think it was me, says Ambot. Well, well done. <laughs> we'll go back and do some more Ambot. That's it, get back over there. So you can use... Use the compass directions once you've got the scapes or whatever to move yourself around. So right. So A said, "I tell you what, it's white. Let's make it yellow." I have them. But yellow still, you haven't got a rule corresponding to that. So that you know, because I did say white, didn't I? Because it was a regulator, but as you say, it couldn't move. So what would what should they do? What I'm just going to focus you to A. Well, um, you're trying to clear blue. Yeah. Maybe make a rule about blue. So do you stuck think on yellow? Yeah. Would that help? Ah, okay, change it to blue. So there's, there's A's rule. I'll just get this over across here so we can watch A struggling to get the very battle, battle against the blueness. So they had a rule which was turned the white to yellow, so they did that. But now it's gone blue again. So add. Here comes ping pong. Ping pong's to, making a big hole in the blue. Look at, look at your bot maker and see it says add rules. So if some of you are overwriting your rules, just add a rule. You can add up to six rules. In your I'm box. going to chuck everyone inside this hole to make it a bit more pressing, but we need to release them. Mm -hmm. I could just drag them across and in. So all of them are getting stuck, maybe. I mean, half of them don't move anyway, so it's given up. They've given up <coughs> actual worms. Sorry about that. They're in, you're going in as well. Okay, we've got 36 in the house. If anyone's just joined us, go to interactiveartists.uk to find the bot maker. There are some simple rules on the page. Or you might just have a go at fiddling with it and then send We're trying to in. get rid of this blue. Ping pong is free. Uh, no, ping pong's working on the outside, trying to figure out how to. No, but it says ping pong is yeah. free, so maybe it got through. No, and it's never been going all over the. Imi's going. Imi is, Imi, Imi is destroying blues. That's a good effort by Imi. So yeah, art, art education. So yeah, loads of artists do incredible things with technology, but usually they're using um, systems that already exist, Instagram, whatever, blogging. Do you have to stand over there? Yes, I think it's blogging. nice when you can see us. What else do I use? Gift maker animations, create videos, create, in, or create interactive poetry, whatever they want to, but using other people's systems. So me and Nicola absolutely believe that the best way to be creative with computers is to learn how to program computers. Program or be programmed is, it's not art phrase, it's something we always say. Um, that's, if you don't know how to create your own systems, then you are at the mercy of other people's systems, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So we try to teach very simple ways of getting into programming. Obviously programming is very difficult, it takes years to be really good at programming, but there are some languages Processing, Scratch, Python, whatever. They're quite simple to get into, and then they can become super complicated if you spend a lot of time with them. We're interested in the even more, even simpler ways of programming, which is the type of thing you're doing now. What you're actually doing is programming your bots. You're giving them a very simple little rules to try and solve a, in this case, a visual problem. Actual worm is doing well, by the way. Actual worm is doing the business. It's turning the blues into yellows or something. If I look at it, focus on actual worm. So yeah, this these types of programs we have. Well, actually, this is a new program. We've only actual worm's got loads of rules. One of the rules is turn the blue to white, and then the next rule is turn white to yellow. 
So eventually it'll get rid of the blue. And what is yellow? Isn't that an amoeba? Yellow is no. Oh, yellow is neutral. Yellow is a neutral, Ye yellow okay. is a neutral kind okay. of colour. It doesn't do anything. So congratulations, actual worm, for some very inspiring rule making. But I can see the actual worm, all your directions are random. So you don't have much control over where on the screen you are. But that's fine, you happen to be in the right place at the minute. So if you click on the R button, you'll see you can give it a direction, a north, south, east or west, or increments of that. One thing we haven't said is that each, um, every time these do a rule, they don't do all of these rules, each go through. They just pick one at random and then try and do that rule. Yeah. So you could have lots of different rules which are turning blue into black or whatever colour you want to and then move north, east, south or west. You could have more something that actually looks for blue a bit more and actually turns directly around the space. Right, so people are still pretty much stuck. So what can we do to help them? It's a combination of... They've got black and they've got green and they've got pink in the space. I will just start... I'm going to program mine. So yeah, this is a very, very simple form of programming, just using six tiny little rules and colours. So mine is, can't tell what it's on top of, but let's just take a guess. Everything okay, Sophia? Oh, I've got change of myself. <laughs> I'm good. I'm still trying to figure out the rules. I don't, I don't don't understand how they work and maybe it's because I can't really see what it's what it's doing when I when I change a rule I can't really see what the um, outcome so is. when you but when you look on uh, zoom your window in zoom can you see it um, where it is in the space tell us what your creature is I can see it but it's all covered up it's doggo and it's what's covered. it called Blobbo. Blobbo. <laughs> Blobbo, it could be anywhere, couldn't it? It's probably in this massive yeah, pile. Yeah, all... Dog, dog god. Dog god. Z. Find it. I mean, I can move him around. Say what it's called again. Grob, I can see. Grob. You had it. Dog so god. Dog, dog god. It's just there. Okay. Yeah, so click on it and let's see. Okay. So you've got... You've got red and you've got, sorry, you've got blue and you've got yellow, but you need to have black as well as an input because if it's not, if it's moved, if it's moved and it's moved onto a black dot or a black space, then it won't, it'll stop still. So you've uh -huh. got, um, yeah, so sometimes, you know, maybe the easiest way to get it started is to create a loop. If it's on black, make green. If it's on green, make black uh, and just see what happens, you know? Okay, thank you. My pleasure. You're quite quiet in. Just thinking what to do next. You can Some of them are doing good efforts. Yeah, so we've had a number of spaces being created. Oh, Let's right. go back onto two. So what other things have you got up your sleeve to, to introduce into the space? I'm just going to send up Tim and clear it all away, hopefully. Trying to figure out how to do that. So basically I've got Tim going up, north, north, north. Okay, I'll just show Whatever Tim's. it hits. So Tim's creating a black line or black, he's making black spots. So I'm, I'm clearing a path, really but good. then how do I get the left one? I just, I suppose I sometimes, I just sometimes go randomly northwest. And bot's doing well. You said one in there, Claudette. There's so many in here. This I'm really on the ball now. I think I figured it out. The trouble is that rule Well gets... done. And it's a very gratifying moment, isn't it? It's, it's, a powerful a moment. it's got a kind of scar sort of. Um, and it's a very interesting pattern you've created there as well. 
So this is, uh, the, as you'll see, the animation process is very simple. There's a beautiful sprite maker online that is a free one, Pixel, Piscal, uh, dot something or other, there's P-I-S-K-E-L, which is a sprite maker oh, like directed at youngsters. No, but the, game was, you know, the, the reason why I thought it was so good was because it's very quickly people can make a little sprite and it gives you the concepts of sprite making. But here, watching. instead of having six frames, here we've got just two frames and it's just flopping your drawing and it automatically creates animation. Now, for those of you who are interested in adding a few eyes to your uh, creatures, you might think about having two dots of white with a black dot above it, and then to the right have the opposite configuration. So you've got the eyes going up and down, or maybe you're going to make a dancing one. So think about where the legs would be positioned, or maybe a starfish. Can we give the mic to Imogen, please? Of course. Thank you. I'm, I'm here. What so, yeah, what we can talk about is... Hello, Imogen. Hi. I, Hi. I, I, I was just saying that I got stuck and I couldn't actually see what colour that Imi was on. So, ah. I'm trying real... Yeah, yeah, it's quite difficult. You just need to, I guess if you can't, yeah, because some of the colours on the screen look pretty similar to other colours. Yeah. We're trying our best to kind this, of um, yeah. separate them out, but it's... Um, <laughs> We're using webcams and they're a bit, they're not perfect colour and then we're putting all these screens together. So you just have to kind of guess, I suppose, eventually <laughs> something yeah. will give. It's, yeah. So yeah, the, 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 um, what looks like blue is a, the dark blue next to the cyan. But sometimes it looks a little bit magentary, so that can lead to a confusion. But yeah, as Tim said, I've tried really hard to configure the, the settings, but it can get a, you know, try and get a colour balance. Um, but I guess this is like the same process all of those people who are working on the COVID virus are going through trying to actually make sense of what they're looking I at. I mean also there's quite a lot of people I think who've probably created a, a bot and then abandoned it. Abandoned bots. I think there's a big pile of them so in the middle there so it's hard to about, see the colour underneath. What about color. we actually say to people then that you, you kill them and they send them back in? No, well, so that we can clear any bots that aren't doing anything? A, a further stage in the programme could be that the bots themselves in the space send back information to the people, the bot makers, you lot. So that is possible. We'd have to do a, um, send a signal in the opposite direction. And there could be, you could get information from your bot saying, I'm, I'm stuck on a red or whatever, help. I think we will do that as a okay, next Okay, so I've got some stage. requests for killing, okay? I mean, we're going to do that. So, I've got requests for killing. Oh, so please, death list, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it says, please kill Grob. I've just got to click on the screen again. Please kill Grob, Botty, McBot, Yogurt, and Kill, 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 Kill. No, that's the mouse gun. Or oh, that is Kill, 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 Kill them. So, Grob, Oh, yeah, well, Botty, you could... One thing, yeah. God's still alive. God's what alive. Team, what? One, I mean, in this, we are playing gods a bit here. Can we have overall control of it, which is we're trying, we try not, we're trying to remove, we will try and remove that eventually because these pieces will get developed into large scale interactive collaborative pieces that can go into gallery or museum spaces and can run themselves. So we would we'll, we will start developing it and figuring out ways that you could send your own kill instruction in, I suppose, or if if you haven't changed a kill off yogurt, if you haven't changed anything for ten minutes, then it could you know wither away. And we 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 try to make our systems have um, a biological, a lifelike feel. So the fact that we can arbitrarily kind of kill things in a godlike way is not, is not always that good. What do you think, Claire? No, I agree. But I mean, we're just, we are, if you can forgive us, learning as well today to try oh, and Yeah, we're sense. testing it out. This is quite a new program. It's only yeah. been like this for a, a Please few weeks. Please kill Paulie. Please kill Video On. Video On? I've killed Hello, someone says. Well done. Please kill AEF. AEF. 
Yeah. I can't even see what they are, but they're killing. <laughs> Paulie, did someone say kill Paulie? Yeah. Done. AEF. Okay, AEF's going. Gone. Going, gone. CC, that's a big one. Uh, so hello, was it? Video hello? on. No, video on. I think video on. Yeah. I killed that one ages ago. Okay. Is it behind you? No, that's the actual worm. Can you drag the actual worm back? What's this one up there? Oh, uh, maybe that's it. It's What's hiding the behind the one? menu. Trodily, no. that hasn't moved for okay. months. Kill that one. Fine. So Tim, can you set a, a different challenge then, maybe? Maybe something to do with the amoeba? Or? The amoeba? Mm. Okay, there is an amoeba in this program. This happens to be my favourite. I'm going to kill yeah, all the dots. Shall I kill everything? Yeah. Gone. Right, so if you've got black in your rule, as an input, you should be good. Uh, lots of oh, there's loads of regulators everywhere. Who's creating those regulators? Everyone. <laughs> there's someone, it's not everyone. Anyway, just put an amoeba in the house. Um, an amoeba is the um, ochre coloured bunch of cells on the right hand side. They, they are using a kind of game of like system and they can spread. They can eventually take over the whole screen. The video on is still there, by the way. Video on? Yeah, it's down there. Okay. This one. Okay, thank you. Video. Oh, that's Zed. Zed is dead. Video is dead. Oh, I just created another bit of amoeba. So yeah, I suppose the challenge is, <laughs> but what is the challenge? The challenge is, okay, you've got to, you've got to try and stop this amoeba from spreading across the entire screen. Something like that? Yeah. So CC has obviously got that mustard colour. Well, I can't thought of a better challenge. Maybe, why can't we create a flat stripe pattern? Everyone could go like north and create colours. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, let's have a creative challenge for you all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time you're going to use go north or south, and you're going to leave a colour trail, okay? We're going to start making a tartan, but we're going to start actually with everyone going north or south, and then afterwards we can weave from west to east. Okay, so see if you can get your creatures. If you've got random in your rules, change it to north or south. So that's where it says go. Yeah. So go. I've done it to um, uh, Tim is now going just up the street. It's not leaving a trail on it, Claire. What kind of trail do you want? I think red. Red. Right, okay. red. So just to remind you that the colours in the top are not active, so you won't trigger fire bombs or you can trigger five bombs here. In the top color, on the top line of colours, they're not. Oh no, not the top line. No, it's the bottom line. The ones that do weird stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I've started it off. Let's put it on screen. Uh, so Tim, you can see, is drawing a red line. Okay. Upwards. So we've got a number. Of they're going to have trouble CC with that. CC is going up. Amoeba. I'm going to get rid of that amoeba, Nicola. Okay. So Tim's killing the amoeba. So see if you can get your creatures to move up the screen. Amoeba are pretty pernicious. I don't think you can kill amoeba, can you? Does the fireball kill amoeba? I don't think it does. I'm going to see if I can get one in. Okay, we've got another one going up. Actual worm is going north. Conway's, no, it's actual worm. Who's drawing that dark green line? Someone's drawing a dark green line. Actual worm's drawing a yellow line going upwards. That's good. So everybody try and draw lines going upwards. It's great. It's a big a stripy pattern. I'm going to add a creature. So what's I talking about in Twilight Club? I don't know, you talk so much. Uh, lost my thread. Do I talk about cheering? I'll leave that bit later. Okay, that's all I've got moved right. Oh, yeah, I was talking about yeah, creating interactive installations that are more lifelike, so not allowing godlike powers. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a, um, a, a sort of supercell, which you could drop, not, not in this, not yet in this program, but you'll be able to drop that and it create, it gathers a bunch of cells around it and then it kind of protects itself and looks for food. So it moves in the direction of the most so the green dots on the screen. Um, if I can get that to work with just, with just using these very, very simple rules, that would be, that would be quite, that would be a good challenge. But, um, 
Okay, so I've been oh, uh -huh. uploaded. Hello? AE. Hello? AE. Is AE uploaded? There was one called AE, but just send it again. If you can't see it on the screen, send it again. Oh, yes, there is. It is there. I can see it. Um, let's go on wall two. It's just below, it's just above ping pong. Bottom yes, left. Yes. It looks like a red cube. A uh, red. Yeah. Let's zoom in a bit. It's him. Okay, so where's my one I've put in? Okay, so I've got blues it's stuck. Why is blue stuck? Oh yeah, so I've done random, so I've actually failed to actually I think so what might be quite interesting is having north and random. Go north or random. Yeah. Well, if you want a to... choice, then you can just you just duplicate the rule yeah. and give it a different go direction, but you only have six uh, six characters stuck to work on with. Purple. I mean, I think one of the next stages would be we've got an, we've got an in colour and an out colour, we've got a direction, but then can they do something else? Can they can you sort of look for the colour that you want to find and go in that direction? So you would the challenge is always to figure out a way to make that simple enough in the interface. Yeah. Can so you that please people can understand it? Kill DR, please. Doctor. Yeah, doctor. I don't mind these. Yeah, but another thing that should should be um, possible is that you can give you can be kill other creatures and kill other bots. Why not? You can build a little wall around them, I suppose, to stop them. Okay, so we've got some creatures going up. Actual worms doing fine. Um, I'm going to get rid of random on one because I'm actually creating havoc. So once you've got your creature that's drawn a line all the way up the screen, right, there's a couple I can see, Anbot has done it and um, Actual Worm has done it. If you add, let's look at one of these. Let's look at Anbot. So Anbot has um, got six rules. Any of those colours on the left that Anbot finds turns to bright red and then goes north. Well. Maybe, Anbot, you could um, occasionally you could go you could go to the right one square. So one of those rules, perhaps, if you get on a, a red color, so you've got red, if you're on red, go red and go north. If you change that to go northeast, then I think you, your character on its own would start filling up the entire screen. Would be drawing stripe. Oh, you dropped a fireball, or someone dropped a fireball. Fire bombs aren't this fire bombs once they've spread don't kind of spread any further. So they can be drawn over bit by bit. So now Ambot's character has got um, a rule, the fourth rule down. If you find red, draw red and move northeast. So you can see on the wall on rule one that Ambot is now creating two red lines and every now and then I think Anbot will move right it just to move right and now it's filling up so eventually Anbot assuming it hits the colours on the left will fill the entire screen on its own bit by bit in red that's a good effort it, until and now you can see Anbot stuck because Anbot has landed on a yellow dot <laughs> I don't know where the yellow dot came from Maybe it was there all the while. So Anbot might have to change its rule now, get rid of that red yellow dot and then carry on. So if Anbot had loads more rules, you could have multiple, you know, she's, I'm assuming it's a woman, she's done it, and now it's moving again in the north direction. It's hit a purple dot, so, and if you can't see those on the screen, which is very small, it's quite difficult, you know, it's going to guess it. Nicola, are you going to show that video again? You're going to show I every am. 15 minutes. Yes, yeah. I was going to show this video every 15 minutes. So um, we're going to show the video again of what, what um, the micro home project is, which is this is this is one small part of the micro home project, but it's uh, um, a show for a couple of hours. We broadcast 
weekly at the moment, but possibly less often in the future, yeah. where we collaborate with other people. So people can send us stuff in and we put it all together, mash it up, send interactive artificial life creatures on top of it, send people pixel things on top of it. Yeah. And we create a two hour show. So um, Nicholas yeah. going to show us on the train. So I'll show, you, I'll show you a video and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So as Tim said, every Saturday since May the 2nd, we've been running our micro world at home on YouTube, live streamed as this is being now. Um, although we're not zooming, uh, we're not including zoom in the feed. And um, we, so it's our experiments, but we also invite other people to participate, show videos, etc. More interesting is the fact that we've just introduced doing live streams of sound and also performance. And we're in, we've been learning lots and we're interested in learning more. And it could be that it's an interesting environment for you to try something out in as well. So if you are interested and you want to understand it a bit better, go to geneticmoo.com and have a look at our posts on the micro world and also um, see about how to get involved and email us. As I said, we well, you'll see on our website, we've got an archive of all of the programs we've done so far. Um, and for those of you who um, work in groups, it may be that you think it would be nice to collaborate together and do something and share with us. So it could be a live stream into the micro world, um, which our pieces can respond to, or maybe it's collaborating on a video and sending that in. But have a, have a look at what we've done and, and get in touch with us and we can knock some ideas out because it's a really it's proved really useful for us to learn and um you know we get a lot out of the experiment and it's possible that it's sort of it will help other people think about you know collaboration is key everyone's been talking about how important collaboration is um, but also actually try things out. So it's not about, it's not a finished show or anything like that. It's about experimenting and trying things out. If anyone's got any questions, Sophia, uh, you can field them to us. And actually, we've, have any questions, we have streamed the whole of this session on YouTube today. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can go back and look and see what you did uh, tomorrow yeah. or later today. Yeah. So what I'm really interested in doing is getting um, some feedback from the people who've been engaging with it. Suggestions for yeah. what to do with it next. Okay, so Tim is, has posed the questions you've just heard and have a think about it because it's... Is it too 20, easy? Is it too difficult? It's 20 past four. Um, <coughs> how many, is it how many weeks well? did you work on this? Oh, it's just, this didn't take long to put together. But as I say, we were developing bits of this idea for a long time with Sean Clark before that, where you could send in anima uh, pixels animating. And then each week we'd kind of try different bits of functionality out with those pixels. So one week we had them um, dropping colored pixels down to the bottom of the screen where we had a load of kind of digital termites, which were building little termite mounds, that mounds out of the dots. And then another week we had um, a sequencer, so a musical, so he, depending on what your animation was, you could create different notes. So that um, the kind of play line would go across your creature and uh, make different musical notes. Okay, so we've so tried I've lots got, of different I've things. Something here. So if you've just joined, here's the link to the app, fine. Um, so Anna says she struggled as being dyslexic. She's struggling to understand the rules. So although I have stuck with it, as I'd love to have been given a handout or example that could have helped me succeed. So, um, under that's yeah good comments um we i made um i made a little video that's actually on the front end of the website didn't explain the rules though, did it? it just explained the... no but it shows it being made it shows the clicking process but that's a very good point and we put some information under the bot maker but it is possible that that's a little bit too wordy um, and you know, we one thing that we failed in is actually doing a share screen. It might have been quite good to actually see the. the I mean, process. one thing that's quite difficult is that the, the colours on the screen in this broadcast are quite different from the colours on the actual screen. Um, so if you could see in more detail what, what the colours were, then you would have a better, uh, I guess, possibly better understanding of what yeah. they're doing. So there's no reason why this pro, the big program, Conway Hall, that's holding all of these bots, 
couldn't also be on a web page and that was how Sean used to do his yes. one. And yes. then we would just we would just load up the web page. I happened to be running idea. it on my local laptop because um, as I say it's a new program so it's quicker to develop it locally. Can you put on Zoom on that by the way? Yeah. I mean Ambot's done very well going through the different strikes and actual, actual word is also doing really well creating a series of colours. Um, What's that phrase so in that book, Nicola? Really? Karen says, I found it really hard in the beginning, but I suddenly got it, and now look at my little wormy go. Hooray! Actual worm, yeah, it's Hooray. got wings. A winged worm. Yeah, yeah, well done. Well done. So, yeah, so the uh, thing that is interesting to us is this um, idea of uh, actually being able to make things, having the audience or the participant or the workshop, or whatever, yeah. having agency within an art space. So it's not just using the thing, but it's actually being able to contribute something to it as well. Um, and I'd just like to point out for quite a few of the rather static bots in the space, that I'm, I'm very keen on biology and there are lots of creatures called sessile creatures that just settle in one space and then and live. So you're still ticking away. We can see that MIT or MIT um, is, is just sitting there. Yeah, I think that's one of yours. Oh, that's it's Tim. Advanced, huh? <laughs> it's Tim. Oh, it's back, is this really screen back? I didn't think it was MIT, yeah. So Tim, no, did I? Tim it's is like, just, oh, God. Yeah, MIT. so Tim is just sitting there, um, but he's, his little eyes are moving backwards and forwards. So he's still doing something, but maybe we can add some rules to it. I, oh, I have so, I, Say it's really yeah. um, addictive, strangely riveting. Um, Marvelous. Do you think there should be more game? This isn't a game, and we don't generally make games. We're interactive artists, um, and we have made a couple I think of there's games. There's always a game element. To but in a game, you have there's usually a way that you have to try and win it. All right. So yeah. we don't. We we're more interested in open play. I'm sure that people have been talking about this today, as a kind of um, a strategy to get people interested in using computers creatively. So I mean, video games are great, and we play loads of video games. But we don't we don't tend to make our things video games. But we could. Um, that is quite a good way to add more addiction into something. If you have, I think, if you have a series of little challenges like, you know, create a create, fill the screen with red or whatever it, it is. It's all yeah. It's this, be, this ties in with plotter art, doesn't it? You know, anyone who's seen little robots drawing. I mean, there's a relationship with that, obviously, that you can output you know eat whatever's on the space and then output yes i mean it's a very common eating and pooing part of yeah well i was going to put yeah the in and out that's kind of the abstract abstracted yeah. way but these are creatures so effectively they're eating resources and then excreting stuff leaving the stuff behind leaving a trail so, i mean this else. could lead into kind of work so we're not particularly political in in a capital p but we are we're interested in getting everyone being creative which is political in itself, and we're interested in um, uh, giving people a better understanding of ecosystems and how everything affects everything else. And in programming, this type of programming, cellular automata, is a good, uh, a very simple um, model that you can use to explore some of those type of things. I mean, we've had the, we haven't had the amoeba taking over the space actually, have we? We've got rid of it, but I can, there are various things in here which will take over. If I turn the speed back on, I'll turn the speed off for a minute there. So I just get it onto the amoeba one. So I'm, I'm sorry, um, actual worm, but this amoeba will probably start eat away at the at your yellow, lovely yellow patterns you've been creating, but that's that's life, I suppose. Um, what else, Nicola? Oh yeah, Alan Turing. What time are we for time? So we are half, half past. Hour. And you know, thank you for everyone who's out there. We've still got 35 people with us, although some people may be having a cup of tea or having a little lie down and hearing us whispering away. But yeah, tell us about Anne Turing, Tim. Um, Alan Turing, you invented computers, Nicola. <laughs> all, I mean, it's, it's, you should really start with that. You have to start talking about computing, computing, you have to start with Alan Turing. We could go further back to the publish, but anyway, Alan Turing, I don't want to stand up. So, Alan Turing was another British scientific genius who, um, he was a mathematician 
and he was thinking about um, computing and how you could um, create an abstract model of computing. What is computing? What can you uh, what can you do? What can you solve with a computer? What can you calculate? These sort of issues. Um, so he was trying to think of the simplest possible model to describe this. So he came up with what is now called, I think it's called, is it is universal compu yeah. computing machine or universal Turing machine, which is basically a very, very, an infinitely long piece of tape. And on the tape are a series of symbols and you might as well say they are dots. So they're either on or off. So either a one or a zero on this really long tape. There's a machine looking at the tape and it looks at whatever's on the bit of tape. It, one, one section at a time. It looks at whatever's on that section, and based on the rules that it has, it decides what to do with that dot. Does it wipe it away? Does it add a dot if there's nothing there? And then it also decides whether to go right or left on the tape. So, this, and this is called a universal Turing machine, and he used that to come. Um, this is way before computers were invented. This is about 1930s or something, came up with this. It's a way of thinking about computation. This led eventually to, once electronics came into, um, got more advanced, led to the building of electrical computers, first computers. But you can see straight away that that, that, that notion of um, having a series of rules and then getting an input and then turning that input into an output and then doing something, moving along the tape, or in our case, moving in any direction you want, is um, you know completely, inspired by or relates, completely relates to Turing's machine. So these are the rules. And then these are the direction it moves in two dimensions rather than one dimension. Great. So I've got some more feedback. Yeah, go on. Um, so um, thanks, Bree. It This has been fantastic. I love having the chance to learn by trial and error. I've happily forgotten I'm on Zoom. You've created an amazing space. The only point of feedback for improvement would be being able to see the characters more clearly. I found it difficult at times. And yeah, that's a good point. And I don't know if you heard earlier, Tim was saying that, you know, we're, so Tim's running this program locally from his computer. Of course, it depends on how many, you know, how much space you've got on your own personal screen, but it could be that it's, the program's running in a browser and then you can actually see the whole of the um, projection. So what is it? Wider. How many pixels is it at the moment? It's running over two projectors. What, what is it? Pixels. 1920? How, how big is the program? Uh, 1280 times 2, so 2560. Yeah, 2, so 000, 2 and a half thousand. Yeah, so it's two and a half thousand. So the third across. Ball, but the trouble is our room is not quite square shaped. There's a kind of a corner of it here that goes back. No, I'm talking about having it on the browser as well, though. We were talking about it. Could be any off. size. Could, yeah. be, could be thousands and thousands of pixels wide. And you could scroll across to find where you are yeah. in the space. Yeah. It's not this program is because it's just drawing dots. It's not doing anything very complicated. So you could have a thousand, I reckon you could have, you know, ten times as wide as this. I'd love to see it that really wide as well. We've Thanks, never, yeah. we've never done, um, we've done bigger projections than this, obviously, in some of the exhibitions we've done, the museum shows. But um, one thing, one actually, one technical thing, if anyone's interested, the way we're doing this is we're splitting it from my laptop. We're splitting out, we're taking the HDMI feed, and then we're also taking. We bought this dongle for about ten pound off eBay, which allows you to convert a USB output into an HDMI output. And then we send those two HDMIs to different projectors. Then in Windows, which is what we're using, we can just extend across both projectors. So this is one program, but it's running two different projections, which sort of just about join here. It's not exactly super accurate, but is there two of my head? Yeah, we all right. It's just it's a little bit, it's a little bit off, but that's what we have to work it's with. Partly so. because we're at angles as well. So that's but anyway, that's a good point, um, and it's. I think we'll probably will end up actually hosting that the actual the environment online so that it's easier to see, and then having it in the space as well. That is, yeah, the, yeah, I think so. It's slightly more difficult to code that, and then do you need a kind of do you need a kind of a database online to kind of back it up so that it keeps track of people's. 
characters. Possibly. So. Ambox films about half of that screen on my left. That's done well. So, David says it is called Telex in French. You write a text, the machine generated by the poles. You can use a perforated band later when the phone line is cheaper at night. Actually, you could turn this into. That was uh, the French pianola. version of the internet that they invented yeah. before the other internet that they um, used to use. This could be a pianola, though, couldn't it? You make holes in it and then. Yes, we could, you could convert the dots into different sounds, so each different colour could be a different pitch. And then you could. <laughs> I have to do that actually. Play it like a massive, it'd be a racket, I wouldn't it? Processing is a great language for get, um, getting, getting into visual coding quite quickly because they make um, things like using webcams and drawing colors and so forth. They've um, made really simple instructions for that. We teach kids as young as sort of six year olds, seven year olds. We say eight, but if they're comfortable with a mouse and a keyboard or, you know. You know how to draw these coloured dots on the screen and, and um, not, you know, in, make things animate, make things react, respond to other things, use the mouse as an interactive dot generator or whatever. So we, 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 we didn't... Go on, what do you want? So, Sophia, did you have something to say? Or ask or I just I only ask because I see your microphone's off, so it's just. So yeah, we generally do. Generally, most of the works that we do uh, um, are the jobs that we get paid for. I already go into kids' museums and um, or kids' or galleries or family spaces. So we deliberately try to make things quite simple and touch screen and not have not have a lot of instructions just to be able to see it visually test stuff out and sort of learn that way rather than um, lots of instructions so in this case uh, we also do stuff with adults as well and i think if you put something into an online space which we're probably thinking of doing with this one then you would have instructions i did move why are you following me around there Nicola? it's all that screen I don't know. Well, maybe you can shove me over a bit. I'll drag you out of the way. I'll put you in the middle of the universe, see what happens. No, I think I've, you know, I don't know. I'll have to change my rules. So let's take that. Let's take that. We have got two blank colours, a dark green and an orange colour, in the middle of the, um, the menu that on the left screen you can see we haven't got a letter on and that means we haven't thought of a rule for those yet so um, i think we definitely need a rule which gets kind of rid of everything yeah but sort of in a natural way rather than just artificially sort of killing everything off in one go What else, Nicola? If anyone's just arrived and doesn't, doesn't know what's going on, then go to the interactiveartists.uk website and there's a bot maker on there, which you can use to create these coloured sprites that you can see on the screen. And then you can try and figure out how to send rules to them and get them to move around. So this is a piece of, we've been making a piece, this is a piece of generative art, isn't it, Nicola? Yeah. So it's so generative alternative because... art education, with no, with no program whatsoever, you can use systems, I suppose you have to write a program that holds it, Conway Hall. You can get loads of people to create incredible visual, ever-changing spaces that could then be put into public spaces and allow other people to interact with them as well. So you can create huge scale, interactive, collaborative artworks. Yeah. Using, I suppose you do need to, you do need a bit of, yeah, you definitely need to know the program or someone does, one person does, but other people don't. They can have just have bits of logical, logical ideas which can create stuff. 
Good. So that's 20 minutes. So I think obviously the creatures that are not doing anything now are probably people who are having a cup of tea. Yeah. This is um, so our micro world at home project, and it's uh, a very loose uh, see what happens experiment in um, coding and. Um, yeah. Computer science. What the one thing we've got missing here is sound. Science. We haven't got sound. We did try doing sound, but sound on Zoom is really hard. As soon as you play any music, it sounds like garbage. So <laughs> when we do these at the same time, so we can get good sound in the room, make interesting stuff, and collaborate with sound artists. But for this one, we we would you had to kind of press a lot of buttons in Zoom to get the sound to be any good, and it's too much back and forth things, so we decided not to bother. But usually, yeah, sound is a really important way to create a more immersive space. I mean, the, the, what, what we find, what we love the most, and Nicholas back was in filmmaking, and mine was in programming, which is safety was one of the things that she was organising in, let's see, David's in the house as well. So that was one of the first places, that's the first place we sort of met. We were making films back then, but now we make interactive, uh, large-scale immersive artworks. But we were both fascinated by being in dark spaces with lit flickering with light, film or pixels. So we love creating immersive spaces, and sound is a really important part of adding to that immersion. And I'm afraid today we haven't got any because it's it just gets chewed up in Zoom. So no, but that could be a progression of this thing then that people's. Uh the sprites that they make actually create things. So this is this program is just one part of the sort of thing we do at Microworld at Home because we actually create lots of different artworks that respond to each other, the space and the audience. So something like this could actually be used to create backgrounds for the creatures that we have or um, trigger events. And um, it could be that the color actually affects another creature. So Tim's just created a barrier here. It's like a river. And that means that things that happen on one side won't happen on another side. I can see some have got stuck. I've just dragged them north and south. So you have to try and build a little bridge. I'll get working up. Oh, there's a big hole there, a bit of filling. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks to everyone who's been part of the session and sent creatures in. Yeah, it's been good. I reckon, I reckon we must have about 60 or so different creatures, so that's a yeah. good, really good test yeah. of it. And I don't think, apart from a few people having problems sending, I don't know, did David ever get anything sent through? I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the system which is used to send it, which I said before, was is something called MQTT, which I've got, what does that stand for, Nicola? Like mark, mark up something like that? Messaging, queuing, message queuing, transfer protocol, something like that. Is, is um, very good for sending quite simple bits of information across the internet. It's quite stable. Basically, it sends them to a, a sort of centralized hub and holds onto that message until someone requests it. So it's quite a good way of doing sort of internet of things type projects. So little bit, little bots, sending instructions to the program and then withdrawing them. So each bot is when you press send, it, gets, it sends all the colors in the actual bot itself. There are 64 pixels which make up your bot, minus the nose, I suppose. So it sends 64 colors and your rules as well, which are about six rules. So not a huge amount of information, about 100 pieces of information. But it quite happily can send those back and forth you wouldn't want to use MQTT if you're running a, you know, not a, a, some kind of game or whatever, Doom or whatever. What's the next game? Kill them up, Nicola? Fortnite, be hopeless at that. So if some of the people have managed to create a big bridge across the, across the thing or carried on drawing the lines. Dog God's made a purple one. Yeah, mine gets blocked every so often because I had to compensate, so it's I changed the purple to blue. So you've got just under 15 minutes left. 
I expect people are going to be having a bit of a breather now to make a tea for the next sessions in. So, Sarah, do you want to do a demonstration of some of the things that happen in the program? Well, I think well, okay. The one we haven't shown, and for good reason. Oh, I don't particularly like this one. But there's one called Swap, which is the brown sludgy colour. Um, I'll just add a. If you swap just bombs around and swaps it, swaps anything it comes across. So they can be quite lethal. So actually swap would have been a good one to send to correct, get yourself out of that box. So I see someone set up a Right, so now. Imogen and Bryce say they're stuck. So maybe the, you need to do send a wave of water through. Imogen? Yeah, well, that, that's the... What's the name of the thing? Yeah, so if you let us know what your creatures are, then we can unstick you, okay? Oh, AE is one of them, yeah. This one, so yeah. A is stuck. A is stuck. And Imogen, you are T. Oh, we've got someone called Tiz. T I Z is stuck. A is, is whatever A E C is. Maybe have a rule for dark red A E because you're on a dark red dot at the minute. You can see in the middle of your thing. The dark red is a firebomb, someone just firebomb the space. So that's this. If, you, if someone creates a light blue colour now, which is the water. And what uh, do you think about always being west and brown? Is that good? That, well, brown is, brown is the, um, the swappers, so yes, that would just be good. fizzle everything else. Yeah. So that's quite a good one, yeah. yeah. Okay, so change your red to a dark red, um, AE, right. So also, um, so Tiz, did you mention the opposite Tiz? Tiz? Mm. I've never seen one called Tiz. Maybe it's under your zoom. Under the zoom? No, that's actually one. It's a bit weird, it goes around that corner and it disappears into, isn't it? Oh, under the menu. Prom. Oh, well, oh, they've managed to free themselves. A's freed itself. So maybe Z, maybe it's Z. I think I had a problem because I had. Z is also yes. stuck on dark red. Imogen? Yeah. I had Imi and then I decided. Yeah. It wasn't moving at all, so I decided to change the name and resend. And yeah. seen Im is there, but not doing anything. But the other ones I set up don't seem to have really? done anything. So I think I've got myself okay. somewhere. Okay, okay, so let's have a look at Imi. So you, the, you can only change the rule of what, whatever the name is that you send. So if, you, if you've got, if you use the old name, will it go to the yeah, old? Yeah, if you go back to the old name, you'll be able to change the rule again. But, where, right. so, but why is Imi not doing anything? Let's have a look at the rules on that one. Imi? Yeah. Uh, Imi's got loads of rules. Wow. Yeah. It's stuck on a bright red dot. It hasn't got a rule for bright red. So if you change your dark red to a bright red, Imi, Imi will start moving again. If you can get to it. Oh, but, but, but that, yeah, the, the thing is, it's, it's a comp. I would say change the blue to dark red because I think you're going to need red. That she's in the middle what of. What you could have done, Nicola, is you could set up. Um, someone could have set up five in all doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Imogen, I'd say change your um, dark, the blue, the dark blue to um, red. Bright red. Bright red. What, what the problem I have is that I I tried to set up a new box. Because Imi was yeah. thing, so I sent it over, and I think I've got conf it confused. Oh, okay. Well, I can change so it. I think I, I've just. I mean, it, it, it's quite right. an open system, so anyone yeah. who names that thing Imi, <coughs> I am. So, what, what, what image will you get, Lucian? Well, oh no, that doesn't let me send that. That's interesting. I didn't let me send that. If I do the same. You can overtake somebody else's box parasitically by using the same name. So I've done that, but it just looks like, I think you're going to have to kill that one because it's, I've, I've sent it to it as well and I can't get anything to it. Oh, maybe you've got something. Oh no, there it is. My, my, uh, uh, so I've got Imi now, but... You've taken control of Imi. But no, I think it's just my rules. control of Imi. <laughs> Mine's not sending. So, anyway, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, that could be, yes, yeah, someone here today could have, you yeah, had to be very coordinated, uh, coordinated. You could have set up about five or six spots and then given them uh, rules and got them to work together. So, because you've only got six rules, you can't deal with every situation. But if you, you could create a little kind of um, 
a little troop of bots and then send them drawing whatever you wanted to do. So that could be, you know, if this was like a lesson or something, I suppose, it's, uh, so you can set more complicated challenges like that. Yeah, so um, Tiz uh, says you're not sure how to send it. So make sure, if, Tiz, if you're new to the, the space, so you've got your, you can make your creature. Don't worry about the rules for the moment, but it's the give it a name and then click on the send box to micro world. Um, if for whatever reason it doesn't go dark grey when you send it, then refresh the page just in case for whatever reason it's got stuck, okay? So Tim, what have you learnt today? Well, the it works, that's good. It didn't crash. That's amazing. And it allowed about 20 or so people to work together. So I think... Um, within the context of Micro at Home, which is just to create an amazing visual space and play around with um, learning bits about computing or very simple type of programming, works really well in that sense. I mean, we're always thinking about how, how do these things we're testing in our room, how do they become pieces in the outside world or an online world? So. I think in terms of online, you'd need to set more complicated rules, more challenges, so people can actually build structures. So they could, you know, they could go four four steps north, do something, go four sure. steps right, do sure. something like that. So you could actually have if more you, freedom. Also, if you if it were to be hosted online as well as within the space, the sprites themselves could be smaller. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we we made them a bit, a bit too big, really, for what they need to be. It's just so that you can you not can see them on the screen. Obviously, with the with the rules, I'm saying obviously, but with the rules, could you draw a circle? It's got only got six rules, not so you could, or at least a box, couldn't you? What do you mean, where the in and out is? Yeah, I'm just thinking about so you actually could create little. Um, it would be yeah, yeah. I should have done that. It's yeah. more kind of um, intuitive, isn't it? Yeah. If there are circles, you're changing circles. Um, yeah, there's little tweaks like that, but I think we're all, we're all, we're always creating works that can be layered over the top of other works to create more complicated spaces. So today, this is all pixelated, and so but we would add in some non-pixelated kind of um, creatures. So I see that there possibly two people have just joined us. Um, so we've still got a few minutes left, but. Um, if you go to interactiveartists.uk, you'll find the bot maker and you'll be able to draw um, a creature and give it a name and send it into the world. On the right side of the bot, there are some um, settings that you can use to create rules. So if you just start simply with if it's black, maybe stay black and give it a north direction, see what happens and then change the colours. There's some instructions underneath. Um, Nicola, there's like two minutes left. Why are you telling right, people how to create something? Five minutes. Like, you need to sum it up somehow rather than getting more new stuff in. I just think. Try and figure out where, what to do with it. So what have you learned? Um, what have I learned? I've learned that incredibly nearly two hours is over, which I think is quite surprising. And that also that quite a lot of people were collaborating at the same time. It is a bit confusing. It's not surprising that actually when your creature gets stuck on someone else's, that you, you know you kind of feel like you haven't got control. So it is about persevering. Um, I've just thought of something very important I didn't really mention. I mean, it's sort of been implicit in what we've been saying, but what but all these rules only allow you to affect um, your immediate space. Your immediate space. You yeah. can't. You can't send a. You can't affect anything that's not right where you yeah. are. And then you can only move one direct, one pixel away from that. So that that, and that's typical of cellular automata. But that uh, also that's typical of um, life. Our cells only really respond to what's in their immediate neighbourhoods. There are very there are a few cells which send signals much further away, neurons or something. But basically, most cells only, only send, respond to their neighbours and can change their neighbours and be changed by their neighbours. So it's a little bit frustrating, perhaps, so you can only move one pixel at a time, quite slowly at that as well. But 
because um, you could be creating rules like you know jump. Possibly, but then it might, you know, I guess you, you might actually have two types of sprite that you get onto. So uh, talking about nature again, this, um, these are also then, if anyone's uh, familiar with slime moulds, this idea that they, uh, you know, slime moulds are used as a, a natural oh, yeah. computer to actually decide best routes for, uh, you know, if you've got a city and you need to put down a train line, to service areas, they may well use a slime mold to work that out. And it's it's sales can a seat and bring a funny face there, but you've seen the program. Well, they, don't, they don't build train tracks based of on where course, the slime mold is. No, fit, it's they? just for the best connections, isn't it? The what's it's, that? Yeah, they do experiments the where they mathematical puzzle called the Traveling Salesman problem. That's the one, traveling salesman, yeah. So slime molds are quite good at solving certain types of problems like getting through a maze or finding the best connections between a series of Points of food, and when we really, really want to create a slime mold somehow, but the greatest, oh, it's defeating me, it's a, it's a bit complicated because they send chemical signals through long trails and then get information back and waves. But yeah, we have a very simple However, we, we're nearly at the end. So, Sai said for some reason when she clicked on it, um, couldn't get the button to work. Um, it, so, that when you click on the button, it should go dark grey to send it into the space. Don't forget, wait that, yeah, wait four seconds. The other thing is, is that if uh, you could give it a different name and load it in again, so clear, delete the name and then try again. I'm just sending one in called X. Um, and yeah, it's gone, it's gone in. So give that a chance. Anyway, three minutes to go, it's nearly the end. It's been a real pleasure to be part of this event and it's been really valuable for us, for our learning experience. And hopefully you've had some fun creating some creatures as well. And hopefully it encourages you to think about how you can use simple digital activities within an art context to create stuff, even though people are without coding, but still with some kind of level of control and collaboration. So is, um, I'm going to go back, do you know, I've been, I've been sort of talking to my Zoom screen and no one can see me. So I just say, um, so thank you very much for being a part of the event. Um, I will just quickly flash that video again about Micro World at Home, that if anyone wants to be part of this event, then just contact us directly. Sophia, do you have anything you want to add before we that. finish this stream? On no, it was great. Thank you. Ask any questions because there was just so much going on. Um, You've got a minute. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 well, I, want, I wanted to ask yeah, you. Yeah, thanks everyone for taking the part. Group and, um, uh, you know, your history and where you started. So uh, Tim said a, a couple of words about that, um, but hopefully we'll have another chance in future. Yes, definitely, definitely. But thank you very much. And um, yeah, have a great afternoon. Looking forward to joining in on the next event. And if you want to see, want to watch what you did for two hours, then go to our YouTube channel. And this will, we recorded everything. So hopefully it works it so you can see. So over back to Chloe, I think. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Tim. That was fantastic. What a brilliant two hours. So during that time, what have I got? I've got, okay, there were fire bombs, wiggling worms, flourishing, oh, talk of flourishing gut bacteria, dishes, creatures, rules, live learning, dongles for HDMI outputs, using computers creatively, uh, open computer source, open source computer processing. Um, and one point you said, you said this fantastic thing about, don't be at the mercy of other people's systems. Create your own systems instead, and that will definitely stay with me. We've got some great, well, I spotted a fantastic pun in the chat. I think it was Nick, thank Moo, for um, genetic Moo, thanks there. So thank Moo, if anybody else would like to add their own puns to the chat, then please do. And yeah, that was just really, really great. Thank you so much.